Okay, so it's time for another gardening week in my life. <laughs> And I'm over here on the allotment in the greenhouse. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to show you in here, so I thought I'd start here today. The first thing I wanted to show you was how well the brassicas are doing in here. So I have planted my calabrese in here, some calabrese in here, and some graffiti purple cauliflowers in here as well. I've also planted them underneath my little um, cloche. Can you see it there? Yes, you can just outside there and I'll give you a look at those in a minute as well. Um, everything is doing really well in here. I come regularly to check it out and make sure that I've got kind of no slug and snail damage. So, so far so good. There is one little problem that I do have in here however and that is I've got a few leaks going on um, in the top the glass has shifted a little bit and I mean it's not a huge problem I'm going to have to fix it definitely but what happens is um, all the ground here has a tendency to get a little bit of algae on it and when you get algae on the ground um, everything sent tends to be quite damp underneath there's not a great deal of um, airflow let's say getting in so I just come here regularly and I just give it a little bit of a tickle the ground underneath these brassicas because I don't want them to kind you know to rot or to do anything you know bad like that so I'll show you in a minute, especially down in that bottom corner, there's a fair bit of algae. So I won't touch that. I'll um, give you a look at that in a minute. Um, and the other thing that I want to show you in this greenhouse is I brought over a tray of wonderful Komatsuma and some lettuce as well. So I'm going to start planting these out because today is leaves day on the moon phase calendar. And um, I have so much transplanting to do, so many leaves to transplant. I thought I would come over here and start to get this, this greenhouse more or less um, filled up with stuff because... Um, before too long, I'm going to have to fill this greenhouse up with my summer crops. So I kind of need these to get going and get out of here so I can get my summer crops in here. I'm not really sure yet what I'm going to put in here, but I was thinking I'm cucumbers would be good because cucumbers did really well in this greenhouse a couple of years ago and then I'm thinking okay if I do cucumbers I might do some melons as well this year I'm going to do some really good melons I mean I do melons every year but this year I've got a few extras to throw into the works so um, let me just plant these up these komatsuma and the lovely lovely lettuce that I've got. I've got some really lovely varieties. The only thing with this Komatsuma, um, let me get one out and show you. This has been in the big greenhouse at home. Uh, I wonder if you can see this. See that, those little black things? That's aphid. So I'm hoping now that they go in here, the aphid will go away very quickly. The other thing I want to show you are these beautiful lettuce. Look at these lettuce. So if you have seen my latest, what I'm sowing in March, I did one video on what the leaves that I'm sowing in March and one video on the rest of the stuff. This is one of the Salanova lettuces that I was telling you about. This is called Soy Rat. Look how beautiful that is. What a fantastic lettuce. And actually all of these that I've got here are all Salanovas. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, let's get on and do some work here. And um, I'll be back in a minute. Here we go. This is this algae that I was telling you about. See how you've got this kind of greeny color on the soil? It happens, <coughs> oh, excuse me. It happens quite a bit in this corner because I do have a bit of a leak. 
and then there you can see it just there but all I do is I just give it a little bit of a tickle and rough it up there that should be fine so that's the end result of my planting out of the Komatsuma and my lettuce they're a bit floppy at the moment but they will pick up no problem I've got a few left there that I'm going to take home with me and I will find room either in my um, kitchen garden or in my veggie pots so um, very happy with that yay so it's time also to harvest um, my cablonero here because it is going to seed you can see it's going to seed but I let it get to this stage because I really enjoy these little kind of sprout tips here um, let me just pick one and I'll show you what I mean see those they are really really yummy 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 so tonight we um, are having duck and um, Mr. N said that he fancied some Cavallonero. So I said, oh, isn't that good? Because we've got, <laughs> we've got a heap of Cavallonero on the allotment. So um, in order to harvest it, all I'm really doing is I'm just pulling off the leaves that are still very, very nice. And there are a lot of them. And the ones below that are looking a little bit dodge, dodgy, um, I will compost. And I just pull them off. And this is how I harvest kale anyhow. You, I always start from the bottom um, because it has this stalk at the bottom. And then I, and I can afford to be a little bit kind of picky with these because there are so many leaves. So yeah, the stalk at the bottom and then it grows up like a tree, as you can see here. And so I'm just going to harvest these, all of these leaves. Anything that we don't use, I just put in the freezer and then you can use them another time. And they really, there's no difference except that of course, you know, this is fresh stuff. And it, of course it's better, I think, when it's fresh. But if you have something like um, the curly kale, you'll find that by um, freezing the kale, um, it actually breaks up the kind of cellulose -y bits in the kale. So if you're not a real kale um, crunchy, where you have to chew it for three hours, lover, you know, otherwise you have to cook it for a long period of time, then that's the best way of actually doing kale is freezing it, I find. Um, and so my curly kales, I don't often eat fresh unless they have these beautiful tops on them with the new leaves. And that's what I've got at home because in February, everything starts growing again. Um, so I freeze it and then it's just gorgeous. Just pop them in these bags. These bags are really, really handy. I've got them in my backpack when I bring them over um, to the allotment. And then I pick my stuff. I'm going to put my purple sprouting in this as well. Um, yeah, so this will be gone, as you can see, all the way up. And then I just harvest the top off it as well. Delicious. Uh, so something else that's gone wrong this week is the state of my cabbages here. You can see that they have been um, decimated by pigeons. Ooh, that's a bit of a very prickly something or other caught in this um, netting, which I need to get rid of. Yeah, so the pigeons got in here and you wouldn't believe it. This was... A day that I was going away I came out just to check on everything make sure everything was fine and um, had a look and then I saw that there were all these pigeons um, in the garden and I thought what's going on here and I came out and had a look and this is what they were doing they were absolutely stripping these cabbages so these cabbages some are some hispy cabbage that um, I actually got from the garden centre. Um, I have four other little cabbages, little Caraflex cabbage, that's the pointy cabbage in my greenhouse. And now I'm debating as to where, where am I going to put them? Am I going to put them underneath this cover here or am I going to put them underneath my cloche? And I think that I'm going to be putting them underneath the cloche actually 
because um, I think that they will actually do better underneath there. So I'm going to put them under the cloche that has got the uh, peas in as well. So let's go and do that now. So here we are and the sun's now decided to come out. Unbelievable. What weather we've had. It's just been so wet and boggy and soggy and terrible. And it's no wonder I cover everything in the garden. <laughs> because these peas here are doing so well. Look at them. They're so nice. Wow. Yeah, okay. The other thing I'm going to put in here as well are these um, Komatsuna. So I'm going to do those. But these little... Um, uh, what are they called? Little cabbages are really, really lovely. I've only got, like I said, I've only got four of them. So I'm going to put them here and on the back row next to the cabbage. Uh, how big will they grow? Let's just make a bit of a hole here. Got a little bit of um, cooch grass in here, but these should do really well. Caraflex, this is a nice variety. This is a um, pointy cabbage. I like it better than hispy, but like I said, I bought the hispy. I got to the end of the season um, last year and I didn't really have any spring cabbage. So I did an impulse buy and I bought some hispy cabbage. Hispy cabbage is usually the pointy cabbage that you get in supermarkets. So, um, do these about eight inches apart, I think. And then, yeah, I'll put the rest of this Komatsuna in the bed as well. I'll leave the lettuce. Actually, shall I do the lettuce? I might do the lettuce as well. I want to just see how good it's going to do. This is a little bit of an experiment. So I put most of the lettuce in um, the greenhouse on the allotment and I'm going to experiment and put them in here as well and let's see how well they get on. Another one here. It's so nice when you cover stuff in the garden, you can then work it in the garden. Otherwise, it's just so soggy and boggy. But also, having raised beds is a really good idea because I um, have got really good drainage on the allotment. I mean, even though I do no dig, which is, you know, great for drainage as well, um, you still have issues with drainage. That one can go just there then. And now let's just put the um, Komatsuna in. So Komatsuna... I don't know whether you've grown it before, but it is an Asian green or an Oriental green, and it is a little bit bigger than um, Pak Choi. Let's put it in here. And um, but it works exactly the same as any other Oriental green or Asian green. Uh, it's just delicious. You can eat it small, you can have it in um, salads, you can stir fry it, you can put it in curries, you can, um, you know, it's just so versatile and it really is delicious and like I said it is a bit bigger than pak choy so um, you kind of get <laughs> more, um, more, more Asian green for your money so to speak. Let's take it out of should be doing this without gloves, I'm thinking. Great. Okay, so that's that. That is that bed. The other bed that's looking really good, and I don't know whether you can see this bed here, or you can actually, um, are my leeks. My leeks are doing really, really well really gorgeous and on that side of me are my um, curly kales and they're looking really beautiful as well. They kind of halted a little bit in the winter in December, January. So December and January things kind of halt 
they don't really grow very well or actually I don't think they actually grow at all and then as soon as February comes along and we get longer days everything starts moving again and growing very very fast so um, that's four cabbages six komatsuma and seven um, lettuce great okay and I'm slipping off my kneeler. All right, fabulous. My Asian greens are now going to seed. So this is some tatsoi that's going to seed. So that definitely needs to be picked. Um, all of this in here needs to be picked. And I've got some turnips in here as well that I need to pick these as well because they're actually going to seed. I'm not sure whether they're going to be any good or not, but I mean, they're a decent size. You can see just there. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to pick these as well. So yeah, I've got this tatsoi that's coming out and then I'm going to, hello, and then I'm going to replace it with some more. And in the big veggie pod, I've got some red um, pak choy as well going to seed. So that's got to come in. And then I've got Quite a bit of space in here at the end i've got a few um, winter radish left so they'll be used up and here i have the start of my radish this is the cherry bell that i sewed on the 5th of january and they're doing really well they're loving it in there as you can see so there you go that's my new plantings here. I'm going to just cover them up now and say goodnight to them. And for my harvest today, the purple sprouting broccoli is ready. We've already had some and we have quite a lot more coming as you can see um, here. We've already cut out the main stem, but if you look, you get all these gorgeous side shoots coming. So I will be harvesting them. Let's go around, see what I mean? There, there, fantastic, there as well. So that's really exciting. I absolutely love purple sprouting broccoli.